Today we are going to learn lesson 1.2. Oops. Which is going to talk about powers and exponents. Our learning target for today is going to be I can evaluate part powers. Evaluate powers. Make sure that if you don't already, you have your name, class period, and the date written up at the top. All right, we're just going to start off with some vocabulary so you know the difference between like a power and an exponent and a base and all that good stuff. Okay, so a power is a product Product, remember, is the answer to a multiplication problem. Um, so a power is a product of repeated factors, of a repeated factor. Okay. The base is going to be that repeated factor. It's the number being multiplied. I'm just going to use the number sign um, to shorten this up. So the number being multiplied. All right, and then that exponent is going to tell you the number of times the base is um, multiplied. So the number of times the base is multiplied. All right, so we have a little diagram here um, to put these vocab words, words into a visual, okay? So the base, the number that's being multiplied is this three, okay? So this is our base in the blue, all right? The power, or sorry, the exponent is gonna tell us how many times we're gonna multiply that base. That's what's here in red. That's called the exponent. The entire um, problem, oops, that's the wrong color, sorry. The entire problem is what we call a power. So three to the fourth is what we call a power. Okay. And then what it's showing right here is that three to the fourth means that three, our base, is being multiplied four times, okay, by itself. So we see that three is multiplied four times. All right, and that is what a power is. That's how we evaluate them. All right, the last vocab word is called a perfect square. Um, and we are going to do some examples on that later, but the definition I'll give you right now is the square of a whole number. Okay, the square of a whole number. Well, first we need to know what a whole number is. Okay, whole numbers are numbers such as 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. Okay, so 999 is a whole number. It, a whole number doesn't have decimals or fractions. Okay, what a square means is that the exponent is 2. All right, so it's just being multiplied by itself once. Exponent is 2. So, for example, if we have 4 squared, it's 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 would be a perfect square because it's the answer to the square of a whole number, 4. Like I said, we'll do some examples below. Okay. Before we move on to those perfect squares, though, we're just going to write expressions as powers. So, if we're given an expression 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, we can simplify it by writing a power, okay? So the base, remember, is the number that's being multiplied. So the number that's being multiplied in this problem is 4. So that's our big number. That's our base. Base, big number. We'll start with a B. All right. And our exponent, the little small number we write up in the top right-hand corner, is how many times we're multiplying 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this could be written as a power 4 to the 5th power, okay? 
The next one, again, our base is the number that's being multiplied. It's our big number. So 12 times 12 times 12. 12 is being multiplied. That's our base, our big number. And we use our exponent for how many times we're multiplying 12. So 1, 2, 3. This will be written as 12 to the third power. All right, now let's work on evaluating the value of a power. Okay, there are some steps that we have to do to show our work for this. So the first thing we're going to do is expand it. Okay, so when we expand the expression, that means if we have 7 to the second power, okay, it's always the base to the exponent, and it's always the base multiplied by the base, however many times the exponent says. So our base is 7, so we're multiplying 7 by itself two times, so 7 times 7, okay? And then we just do our math, 7 times 7 is 49. This is the work that I would need to see on a quiz or test if we are finding the value of a power. So here we have 5. 5 is our base. It's our big number. So we have 5 times 5, 3 times, times 5, right? And then we just simplify it. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then we have to multiply 25 times 5. Well, that's not mental math for me, so I'm just going to pull it over to the side and do that math real quick. 5 times 5 is 25, so we drop that 5, carry that 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 plus 2 is 12. So 25 times 5 is 125. All right. Example 3 is talking about perfect squares. Remember, perfect squares are whole numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way on, um, multiplied by themselves. Okay? So what number times itself equals 64? Well, I know 5 times 5 is 25, so it's got to be bigger than 5 because 25 is too low. Um, oh, yeah, 8 times 8 is 64. So if I know my facts, 8 times 8 is 64, this guess would be a perfect square. Okay. For example, part B. We have 20. Okay, and I don't really know what number times itself is 20, so I'm just going to guess around. Okay, I know 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 is too big to be 20, so we're going to go down to the next whole number. Well, the next whole number down from 5 is 4, because remember, whole numbers aren't fractions or decimals. 4 times 4 is 16, which is too low. What that means is that there is no whole number between 5 and 4 that could equal 20. So this could not be a perfect square. All right. All right, one last example, a word problem. Okay. A Monopoly game board is a square with side length of 20 inches. What is the area of the game board? And I kind of give you a hint here that the area is of a square is the side length times the side length. Well, if it's a side length times itself, because it's a square, so they're both the same, it technically is that side length squared, because it's times itself. Okay, well, if our side length is 20, the side length is 20, we can, instead of writing side length, put 20 squared. You don't need these parentheses here. I just put it there so that we knew that the side length was there, and then I just copied it over. So we don't technically need those. You can keep them or not. Okay, and 20 squared is 20 times 20. I'm going to use a mental math trick of doing 2 times 2 which is 4, and then just drop both my zeros to make this 400. Okay. Last but not least, we have to label this answer. If it is 20 inches by 20 inches, meaning we're multiplying inches times inches, it is inches squared, which is our label for area. Right. Down below, you're going to see six problems um, that I would like you to complete on your own. Okay, so I want you to pause the video try to answer each of these questions and then I want you to resume the video because I will give the answers but if you don't pause it it's not going to give you enough time to work okay so I need you to pause the video right now and then just resume it when you are ready to check your answers all right if you are listening now you should already have these six questions answered and you are just there to check them all right we're writing these expressions as powers so our base is the number that's being multiplied our number that's being multiplied is six one, two, three, four, five, six times is being multiplied six times, so our exponent is six. 
Same thing with 15. 15 is our base because it is the number being multiplied. It's our big number. And 15 is being multiplied 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So this is written as 15 to the 4th. The next set of problems, you're finding the value of the power. So we were evaluating it. So we were taking 6 times 6 times 6. Okay, well, I know 6 times 6 is 36. But I don't know what 36 times 6 is, so I'm going to pull it over to the side and show my work. Again, I have 6 times 6, well, that's 36. Drop my 6, carry my 3. 3 times 6 is 18, 19, 20, 21. So 6 to the third power equals 216. All right, number 4 is a little easier. We just have 9 squared, meaning 9 times 9, which is 81. All right, 81 is a perfect square because it's a whole number times itself to get us 81. Last one, perfect squares, 99. Now, I'm not sure if any number times itself is going to equal 99, but I'm going to use some mental math, and I know 10 times 10 is 100, which is pretty close to 99. So I'm going to say 10 times 10 equals 100. Okay. Well, that's too big. So now I need to go down to 9 times 9, which is 81. That's too low. So there's no whole number between 10 and 9, because remember, it can't be decimals or fractions. So this cannot be a perfect square. Number six, we have 25. Well, I know 5 times 5 is 25. So yeah, it is a perfect square because 5 times itself is 25. All right. At this time, you can um, rewind, pause, go back to any part of the video that you still need some help with, um, or you can go on to writing your summary about answering your learning target, which is I can evaluate powers. So what did you learn today that helps you evaluate powers.